Hi, I am Abdul Wahab Al Azib. I am a PhD student at the University of Arkansas. Today, I will introduce uh, our paper, which is Securing Database Integrity in Intelligent Government System that Employ Fact Computing Technology. As we know, the future of the internet is going to be the Internet of Things. And the estimated number of connected IoT devices in 2030 is nearly 125 billion, which will produce a massive amount of data. But the important question is, will the current internet system architecture be eligible to manage and move that volume of data to the cloud? Also, our society has created a lot of sensitive and real-time application as integral part of our lives, such as connected car technology, video conference applications, smart meters, and so on. All of these applications require low latency and location awareness in order to provide satisfiable and high quality services. So the need for a new platform will become necessary to address the above mentioned issue. For that reason, fog computing was uh, introduced by uh, Cisco to provide many fundamental services close to the ground, including the ability to process a huge amount of data, storage, and networking services. Therefore, the fact computing will be the appropriate solution for many sensitive applications that require real-time uh, processing and location awareness. Also, it enhances privacy and security because the data is kept and computed close to end user uh, at the edge of network. Uh, government around the world are creating intelligent environment systems that uh, will improve uh, the quality of services they provide and the living conditions of their citizen. By utilizing fact computing technology, they will be able to capture and utilize maximum benefit of their systems and provide a safe environment with high quality services. However, these technologies don't come without risk. One of the most critical issue in fact computing is the preservation of security and uh, privacy for consumer data, while several researchers uh, have attempted to address the security issue in intelligent system that employing fog computing, there are still aspects of this issue that require further attention, including the assessment of uh, potential damage to data exposed to malicious uh, transactions, and also determination of uh, a secure data recovery method from such attacks. Damage assessment and data recovery are essential in creating secure and reliable databases. The damage assessment and data recovery have been addressed by many researchers. Uh, there is uh, one study performed only on the damage portions of that, the database, and uh, they can be previously determined which item are affected, but their work uh, based only centralized database. Also, there is uh, another work which uh, requires the additional of before image table for each modified data item in the system. Uh, they can repair the damaged data without assessing the whole log file, but they do a lot of unnecessary work by building before image tables for all data items in the system. To uh, the best of our knowledge, there are uh, only two work have been done in damage assessment and data recovery methods for uh, fog computing systems. Both uh, methods require scanning the entire log file, and uh, also they require continuous communications between all affected fog nodes on the entire systems. Our model needs only to scan the global graph to achieve the same end, which will minimize the time required to execute damage assessment. <clears throat> the primary objective of this paper are uh, propose an awful model 
design for uh, an intelligent government system using fact computing technology to uh, control and manage the data across the entire systems and also propose a unique scheme to detect and assist data affected by malicious attack in the model system. The proposed architecture for uh, uh, this uh, system, each government agency has its own subsystem. Some subsystems may have uh, restricted access to other subsystem. And uh, it's uh, assumed that the whole system is uh, trusted since it's owned by the government. Uh, each uh, subsystem are run by different authorities and have at least one primary FAG data service node which can perform some important operations such as calculation and uh, aggregation of uh, required data. This uh, opera uh, operation are uh, necessary to uh, optimize the bandwidth of network and increase the privacy and security because the most, uh, most of the data uh, is now processed locally at the edge of the network. And also, the, this uh, subsystem uh, will have uh, multiple transient FAG nodes which will be well distributed to ensure the quality of service throughout the county. And uh, those uh, FAG nodes are responsible for collecting data from end user across the county. In the whole system, there is one trusted FAG node which is located at the center of the system to ensure reliable connection to all subsystems and providing a secondary pathway in the event any FAG nodes is uh, disconnected. Uh, it's responsible for handling security matters such as key management and distribution and also it will play the leading role in damage assessment and data recovery algorithms. Uh, this model implements a uh, transaction dependency graph to observe and uh, monitor all transactions. This graph allows quick detection of all affected transactions if a malicious transaction is discovered. The reason transaction dependency is used instead of uh, data dependency is based on its build and speed of detection. A data dependency build would be complex and messy, while the transaction dependency will be more easier to build and capable of detecting and blocking all affected data items. Uh, building a local graph algorithms, each FAG data service node will build a directed graph based on uh, transaction dependency relationships between transactions that have been successfully committed uh, to its database. To generate the graph, each FAG node will build a matrix of uh, two rows, one row for data items and one row for the last updated transaction to those data items. Here is the matrix. And when a new transaction is committed, the matrix will be scanned to determine its dependency. Here is we have an uh, example of a log file for FOG, FOGX, for example. And here is the uh, local graph for uh, this schedule up to transaction five. So when it's when uh, transaction six is committed, uh, the algorithm will scan to see that transaction six is read data item D and A, which was updated by transaction four and five. 
to add transaction six to the uh, graph. Now we will uh, draw an uh, edge between uh, transaction four and uh, two six and uh, from also transaction five to six. And also the matrix will be updated because the transaction six here updated data item D and updated data item A as well. Now, how to build the global graphs in trusted FAG nodes? The trusted FAG nodes obtain global graphs for any transactions that access a data item from another FAG data service node in the system. Whenever TI from FAG X has access, data item A from FAG Y, which was updated by uh, transaction J, then a copy of TJ graph will be sent to the global graph, including all preceding vertices that could affect A directly or indirectly. Also, a copy of the entire TI graph will be forwarded include, uh, to the trusted FAG node, including uh, all its, uh, its uh, peer, uh, children and the grandchildren and so on. This uh, graph, the TI graph, will be updated frequently to prevent uh, graph size from becoming excessive. Uh, a threshold will be figured so that once the number of transactions in each FAG node reach that threshold, it will uh, be flushed to the cloud for uh, permanent storage. Here we have uh, one example. This is the local graph for FAG Y, and this is local graph for FAG X, and this is the global graph in trusted FAG nodes. Uh, in this example, for example, if T1, transaction one, from uh, FAG Y want uh, read data item J, for example, which was updated by transaction five in FAG X, then transaction five, a graph including uh, all its uh, preceding elements, which uh, is uh, here uh, T1 and T2, which is the parents of T5 and its grandparents and so on, will be uh, forwarded to the trusted FAG node. So in this case, only T1 and T2 will be forwarded as well as transaction five. And once transaction one here in uh, FAG Y is committed, uh, it will be added to both a graph, to the FAG Y graph and also to the trusted FAG node graph. Uh, all uh, new transaction added to the local graph of uh, FAG Y and in the same time, uh, it's a successor of T1, it will be added to the global graph as well. So for example here, T2 and T5 read data item K from uh, which was updated uh, by transaction one in uh, FAG Y. So those two is a successor or child of T1. So it must be added also to the global graph. Uh, and this process uh, will be continuous. So as we see here, transaction four also is successor of T1, which is the grand uh, child, child of T1. So it must be also added to the global graph as well. But as we see here, the transaction six is not successor of uh, T1, so it will not be added to the trusted FAG node. Uh, this copy will be updated and sent frequently. The damage assessment algorithm. We assume the intelligent detection system, IDS, is responsible for detecting 
the malicious transactions in the system. And once the IDS detects a malicious transaction in the system, it will send them as a list to the trusted FAG node. At the same time, each factorized primary FAG data service node in the system receives the malicious transactions detected on its database. To identify all affected transactions, uh, the graphs will be scanned using a modified depth first search algorithm beginning with the malicious transactions received from the IDS. Immediately after this part of the damage assessment process is completed, each subsystem receives a list of all affected transactions detected on its local database. All data items updated by those transactions considered as damaged and they will be blocked from being accessed. The rest of the data items are made available to user. Uh, as part of our future work, we plan to evaluate the model by simulating the whole environment and uh, examining the performance of the proposed algorithm. And uh, here are some of our uh, related previous work, and we are glad to uh, listen and uh, to your uh, comment and also question thank you so much